So you're using a dating app, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, Coffee Meets Bagel. You've got hundreds of men at your fingertips and you're getting lots of matches. The problem is that it's overwhelming. Guys will match with you and not take action. Guys will text you through the app and not take action. Guys will ask for your phone number and not take action. Guys will start texting you and not take action. Guys will ask you out and then not take action and follow through on a first date. Everyone just seems so busy, so flaky, so insincere that it feels like too much work, only to result in meeting a couple lame guys. So what's a girl to do? Stick around for this Love You podcast and I will explain. I'm Evan Marquette, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome to the Love You podcast. Keep listening to learn how to use dating apps better. When we're done, I'll let you know how you could apply to Love You to create a passionate relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood. So I've been in this for, as I said, about 17 years. Um, wrote my first book about online dating 2003. Um, and ended up doing a TED Talk about online dating called No More Bad Dates. I think I did it in 2014 off the top of my head. The idea behind that is the idea that I want to briefly present to you here today. Basically, I came up with this idea that I think works really well for both men and women, regardless of the dating mechanism that you're using. And the idea is called the 222 rule. And I don't want to get into the weeds and all the details here. But the idea is that if you're using a conventional dating site like Match or OkCupid, you want to lead a guy from through a process that feels good to him, where you can make a connection on the dating site, leave the site to go to Gmail, and schedule a phone call all in less than a week. And the point of this is to avoid texting. And this is something that I teach to my clients in Love You, and it's one that still works beautifully for those who employ it. But since lots of people fight me on it, and I have no interest in fighting with anybody because they insist on using dating apps over conventional dating sites, I've had to modify my 222 rule. But I haven't modified the principle behind it, just the execution. So the principle behind 222, the principle behind online dating, the principle behind Love You is this. You are the CEO. Men are the interns. There's no shortage of people who are going to be interested in a job with you. Your job is to make a fast, fun screening process before the guy earns the right to take you out to dinner on a Saturday night. If you don't do any screening, what's going to happen? You'll end up getting stuck in texting hell, or you're going to go on lots of terrible blind dates with strangers. And if that somewhat describes your dating experience, you should listen up, even if about what I'm about to say sounds a little bit weird. So right now, I'm going to give you three steps to making dating apps work for you. And they're kind of counterintuitive. If they were intuitive, you'd already be doing them. So this is probably going to challenge your way of thinking. Number one, screen in, not out. This is something we see a lot. And I notice it a lot more on dating sites because you have search criteria. I'm looking for a man who's six feet tall. I'm looking for a man who makes $150,000. I'm looking for a man who makes a master's degree. And we search and we search and we search for this unicorn of a man. I'm looking for my husband. I know what I want. I know what I'm worth. And then you narrow your search to nothing. And then we work backwards from there. And we say, oh, there's no guys online. Um, Search mechanism is The same thing on a dating app, you're mostly looking through faces, you're judging people on attraction. But the point is to screen in and give more people a chance, as counterintuitive as that seems, because trying to choose a man from a photo and a two-line bio is obviously not the best mechanism. The goal is to give yourself an opportunity to meet good guys. And statistics show, and this is not about you, the listener, this is about, you know, what statistics show. Women tend to reject, swipe left, on 95% of guys, 99% of guys, like, a, like an astounding number uh, of guys are rejected. And if you're only choosing the guys who seem like nines and tens, because why would you go out with anybody else? That is part of the problem. Even if you feel like you're overwhelmed, I need you to open up to the sevens and you'll be in a much better position to choose a partner. And 
I want you to remain open to this idea even when it challenges you. I'm not telling you to slum it. I'm not telling you to settle. All right. I couldn't tell you whether I'm a seven or not, but I could, t- I could tell you a lot of people would, would screen me out online because I'm pretty much average in terms of uh, my build and height, et cetera. So stay open to sevens when you're looking at guys. Don't just go for the GQ guys that every single person goes for because it perpetuates more of the same problem. Now that you're screening in and not out, number two, we want to screen out based on effort. We screen in based on looks, giving guys a chance. Now that we have guys in the fold, we screen out based on effort. And that's where this modified version of my 222 rule comes in, which is a couple emails on the dating side, couple emails on Gmail, couple phone calls on a date. That's 222. Don't worry about that right? because it doesn't work the same way on an app. But let's keep in mind uh, the spirit of the idea in line. If The worst thing about dating is that everybody's flaky. What we established at the top of this podcast, everybody's flaky, everybody's busy, nobody says anything interesting. All guys are about instant gratification and looks. Here's my number, text me, let's meet. This push, 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 all on guys' terms. You have a lot of power, tons of power. Don't worry about what other women are doing. Just worry about how dating feels to you. If you feel that you spend too much time texting, too much time getting ghosted, too much time not getting anywhere with everybody because nobody has a real connection. Your job is to make a real connection where the women fail to do so. Right? So the idea is to, if you're not going to use email like old school online dating, fine. Make your text longer. Have a conversation. Differentiate yourself from the crowd. Right? Instead of volleying those one-line texts back and forth. I did another podcast about it recently, but it is a recurring theme since this is where most dating takes place. If you're going to use this medium, let's try to have conversations that feel a little bit more real, the kind that you'd simulate in real life, as opposed to doing what everybody's doing, what everybody thinks comes naturally, which is usually the laziest form, right? How do I communicate with 30 people at the same time? Well, you can't really put too much attention into it. You want to put a little more attention into it, make people feel interesting, right? Want to be an interesting person yourself. You've got to put a little more energy in, right? So now... You're making an effort, we're screening in guys, and we're paying attention to how they show up. This is what I mean by screening out based on effort. Just because guy's really cute, doesn't give him a free pass. If he writes you one sentence and then disappears, if he, he is really intermittent in his communication with you, if he never asks you any questions, if the conversation really never goes anywhere except, hey, wanna meet, you're really hot, send me some pics. If that's literally all you're getting, there's a guy who's gonna try harder with the prop, proper prompting. So we want to see what kind of effort a guy is going to make over a few days or a week to earn the right to take you out. If you don't have that HR department, right? If you're the CEO, this is our HR department. If you don't have your screening mechanism, you're going to find yourself texting a whole bunch of guys or going out on a whole bunch of blind dates with total strangers because you didn't do anything to pay attention to whether he was going to make an effort. You just gave him a free pass because he was cute and he was aggressive. You can't just give guys a free pass because they're cute and they're aggressive. Now, number three, you screened in rather than out on looks. You've given a chance to the sevens, for lack of a better term. And you're choosing guys based on how they court you, the kind of skin they're putting in the game, the kind of effort that they're making. With those two things, now that you've established somewhat of a relationship and made a connection, schedule a phone phone call, a FaceTime or a Zoom call, rather than texting and meeting. You don't want to meet total strangers. You don't want coffee dates. You don't want to play phone tag and just leave messages for each other. All of this is a momentum killer. Your first date really should be this phone call, this FaceTime, this Zoom call. And if you could do this for a half hour, hour, hour and a half, where it's just really easy, fun, organic, think about how great your first date is going to be in person. And if this date is good, there'll be another one. You don't have to rush into it. You don't have to meet in person. If you insist on meeting every cute guy in person, I just talked to someone the other day uh, who's who's now married, who's telling me about his single life, and his methodology was to really just, the the very thing I decry, to to spam as many women as possible and line up four dates in a row for coffee to see if there's chemistry. If you like that, keep doing it. I'm presuming you don't like that. So now you don't have to get dressed up, you don't have to drive across town, you don't have to meet guys for coffee. 
Coffee is a date. No one makes out after coffee. So if you want to have a real date, hold out for a real date. Your phone call, your FaceTime, your Zoom, that's your first date, as opposed to meeting a stranger who has no investment in you completely blindly, where all you've done is exchange three texts. Now you're going to have better first dates, fewer bad dates. Doesn't guarantee a connection, but between you and me, and I've said it before, say it again, would you rather have one date with a guy you're excited about meeting on a Friday night, or would you rather have four blind coffee dates back to back to back to back? The choice is yours. And if you try to do things my way, and a guy can't be bothered to play along, he can't write longer texts. Too difficult for him. Let's just meet. Puts up a big fight. Or he refuses to set up a time to talk to you on the phone because that's too much effort. He wants to be more spontaneous. Or if he insists on just one line back and forth texts that take weeks and weeks and weeks to build up any momentum. Or if any of these things happen and you just doesn't feel good, realize that's the whole process of being the CEO. It's just another intern who doesn't want the job bad enough. Let that guy go and focus on the men who do make more of an effort. So with this, comment below. Would love to hear your thoughts. I know nobody else on the internet gives advice like this. I, I know this sounds really impossibly old school, but if you're not happy with the status quo of dating, what are we going to do to nudge men into putting more effort in to treat you better? If you allow them to get away with all this stuff, they're going to keep on getting away with all this stuff. So advocate for yourself. Show a man how to treat you. See who rises to the occasion. Now you're going to have a good date. And if you go on one date a week, a good date each week, you're going to find a guy you like before you know it. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Thanks for tuning into the Love You podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell. Choose all to ensure you get notified when new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple. More reviews equals more awareness and more love in the world. And if you want to have an easy relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood, look for the link below or go to www.evanmarkkatz.com to watch my free video about how to gain confidence, attract quality men, and fix your broken man picker. When you're done, you can apply to Love You to join hundreds of other smart, strong, successful women from around the world in a coaching community where women like you actually get the unconditional love that you truly deserve. I'll see you there. Talk to you soon.